Hi, right, welcome. So this is a video on uh, how to repair these flex type cables, FFC. This is a 14-way one, uh, uh, and it it all got damaged at this end, so I've cut it clean off. Uh, and it's how you can maybe reuse this cable without having to buy a new one. Uh, so I'll show that, uh, and also using this cable, I'll show you how if you need to break out onto some of the tracks. Uh, you know how how to do that um and yeah a few other tips while you're doing these things to try and repair them so what you really need to start with is you need something solid like this like this steel plate uh this sort of work mat cutting mat isn't suitable really and you need a, a sharp stanley knife uh and you just start to scratch the plastic away like that Uh, I'll probably speed this up because it takes a while but if you rush it uh, you will make a mistake and it takes time you should always go that way as well rather than doing that just go one way and eventually you start to show the conductors underneath uh, and they're not particularly well glued to this substrate so it's very easy to go through and then spray them and then you'll have to start again so key is a sharp knife and a little just a little bit of time and you can see that you start to display the connectors like that in fact that'll do to be honest so eventually if you carry on you get to see all of them uh, and then all you need to do is from the damaged end or if you can't find a damaged end or you'll get a thin piece of uh, plastic glue it on the back of the end there to give it some some stability and then your cables okay to use again uh, it's as easy as that really but let's say you wanted to um, I don't know, uh, break some pins out um, or let's say it's broken somewhere in the middle uh, maybe a couple of couple of lines are broken you know what might you do then so that's a little bit more tricky um, and as you can imagine if you you might just want to break out a pin straight off the end connector uh, but because they're so close together it's really easy for solder to flow from one connector to the other and it, you just make a mess of it all and have to start again so what I found is the best way to do is is to stagger it. So let's say, I don't know, um, the second track. So let's what you would do is scratch out the plastic. Take a bit of time. There we are. Maybe do a bit more. Uh, let's say that that second track was broken in the middle here somewhere so you could then scratch there as well won't get the right track so it was helpful and I think we'll just sharpen this blade up So there, you can see you're starting to expose the conductor. It's actually quite tricky to see how it's on camera, so I'll just do it. There we go. So you've now got that conductor and that conductor exposed. And you can use solder iron. Uh, 
and put a tin of solder on there, a tin of solder on there, and then run a wire across, which I'll show you now. Soldering iron temperature needs to be really low, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, you, these cables, it's certainly a bit better soldering it in the middle. You've got a bit better heat dissipation along the track. We're trying to solder anything at the end. Um, you very rapidly damage all the plastic. Uh, you can see it's actually, this one's rated to 105 degrees C, which is, which is better than some... Uh, a lot of the more common ones are only 80 degrees, but you don't have much time, so you can't be holding the soldering iron on here for ages. You'll just destroy the plastic and destroy all the all the structure of it. So something around any solder that you know, if you can get it around 200 degrees, 230 degrees, something like that, uh, and you'll see. Just put the solder on there now. There we go. That track's tinned. Uh, we'll tin this one. That track's tinned. And then I'm not going to, don't need to do it, but then you just solder a wire between there and there. And that would, that would fix the flex cable. Um, If, for example, you want to break out uh, a couple of wires to, I don't know, go to a, a new sensor or something, or or break out the signal on this on this FFC cable, um, let's. Well, I'll show you how to do that. So, there's, let's assume that there are um, two, um, let's say four conductors, say that are close to each other. So let's say it's the, the I don't know the middle the middle four on here one two three four. So you'd think oh I'll just easier I'll just uh, solder four wires on the end of here. Well the problem is with the heat and you know the solder and the, the proximity these are a one mil pitch uh, but you can get uh, cables that are even finer than that. You, it's just a nightmare and you end up with blobs of solder across here you're trying to bridge it off and then uh, get rid of it and then you end up melting the plastic substrate and it, it just just doesn't work so the easier way um, is to do it this way so in fact what I'll do I'll, I'll take the let's take the first four four tracks because it'll just be a little bit easier so you what you do is you stagger it so let's, let's scratch this to get track number one exposed there we go so that's track number one exposed and then because of the way that the tracks because they're so close together in the solder what you don't want to do is track number two scratch here so track number two just scratch over here somewhere So there's track number two, and track number three, you can go back to here. One, two, track number three, there we are. There's, there's a reflection there in there, so let's bring this closer. So you can see track number one's exposed then track number two and then track number three and the the staggered like that and then track number four we'll, we'll do it just for completeness there we go That's track number four exposed And then you can turn each one of those four areas. Again, the soldering iron pretty much as low as it can go uh, for the solder. 
But interestingly, if you have it too low, you end up heat soaking the plastic for too long uh, and it can cause more damage. So it's it's good to have it, whatever the minimum temperature is as a solder, have it maybe 10 or 15 degrees higher just so it it flows nicely and melts quickly uh, without you having to have lots of heat on the, on the track for a long time. So I've got this set at nearly 240 degrees. I'm just going to put some solder on there. There we go, tiny amount of solder and it's flowed straight away. I'll put some solder on this one. There we go. And then we'll just do the next one. And I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera when I've done so you can see what it looks like. There you can see there's four patches tin there ready to accept a wire. Um, obviously you've got to use pretty pretty thin gauge wire. Uh, I might have some here somewhere. Yeah, so th this this sort of gauge of wire, and you can uh, Come with that. So you could you could solder that one onto there, and you could have you know four wires coming off here, all broken out quite nicely. Um, yeah. So there's a you know three tips there. So tip one, if you just want to restore the end, just scratch all the plastic away slowly with a knife, and then put a piece of backing plastic on, maybe from another one of these that's damaged or a thin bit of acetate, maybe from a. I don't know what from you know, a DVD case or something. Um, if you want to bridge a track, uh, if it's say it's got kinked and broken in the middle somewhere somehow, then you can scratch either side and then just solder a bridge wire across. That's tip number two. And tip number three, if you want to break out multiple pins on one of these things, um, then what you don't want to do is be trying to solder at such a fine pitch wires to all this connector at this end just won't work so what you need to do if i can get to the, there we go focus there we go, is scratch staggered like that and then you can solder wires to each one of these and you massively minimize in fact probably eliminate the risk of soldering one track to another by accident okay hope you found it useful um i know these things are a pain um I mean, they're great for what the intended use is, which is, you know, one time connect and connect. But for anything that's multiple use or you have to disconnect it and reconnect it a lot, they're just not, not robust enough, really. Um, OK, thanks very much. Hope you find it useful.